Have you ever wondered where bungee jumping comes from? Well, when I went to Vanuatu, I had the opportunity to learn all about it. Bungee jumping first became popular in the 1980s in New Zealand, championed by AJ Hackett, and it's now performed all over the world. He was inspired by an ancient ritual that's performed on Pentecost Island in Vanuatu. Every year, young men tie vines to their feet and throw themselves off wooden structures up to 30 meters high. Mackenzie and I decided that it was absolutely something we couldn't miss while we were living in Vanuatu. So we booked a tour with air taxi and flew over to Pentecost Island to experience this local custom that's unique to Vanuatu. We flew over from Port Vila in a small prop airplane with just 10 seats. There were some amazing views as we flew over the smaller islands as well as reefs littering the ocean. The flight took about two hours and we soon arrived at Lonoroa Airport on Pentecost Island. After gathering all the other guests together, we jumped in the back of some pickup trucks and headed down the highway. After a fairly short drive, we arrived at a little roadside market. We stopped for a coconut here because it was only 50 vatu compared to the 200 vatu we were paying in Port Vila. After finishing our coconuts, we proceeded up a muddy track with our local guide taking us to the land diving location. And then you're there. The diving platform's located at the top of a hill overlooking a coconut plantation out to the ocean. And I think it's actually really beautiful. Shortly after the singing began, When the singing reached a crescendo, then the first dive all leapt. <laughs> Land diving, or nagol, is an annual ritual that's associated with the yam harvest, with a good dive being associated with a better harvest. The origins of nagol tell of a legend of a woman who was unhappy with her husband, so she ran away into the forest. Her husband followed her, so she climbed a banyan tree. He followed after her, so she tied vines to her ankles and jumped and survived. Her husband jumped after her, but he didn't tie the vines to himself, which caused his death. Originally, women repeated the jump in respect to the original woman who did it, but husbands were not comfortable with seeing their wives in such dangerous positions, so they took the sport for themselves, and it gradually changed from jumping from trees to specifically designed wooden towers. The villagers believe land diving can enhance the health and strength of the divers, a successful dive can remove the illness and physical problems associated with the wet season. Furthermore, land diving is now considered an expression of masculinity, as it demonstrates boldness that's associated with the buari, or warriors. The divers start with the least experienced at the bottom, and work their way up to the most experienced jumping from the highest point. According to the Guinness World Book of Records, the g-forces experienced by those at their lowest point in the dive is the greatest experienced in the non-industrial world by any human. Construction of the jumping tower takes between two and five weeks and around 20 to 30 men help construct it. The men cut the trees to construct the body, clear a site for the tower and remove rocks from the soil, which they till to make it more soft. The wood is freshly cut so that it can stay strong. The core of the tower is made of a lopped tree and a pole scaffolding tied together with vines to stabilise it. Several platforms come out about 2 metres from the front of the tower, which is supported by several struts. The lowest platform is normally about 10 metres, and the highest platform is near the top, up to 30 metres above the ground. During the jump, the platform's supports snap, causing the platform to hinge downwards and absorb some of the force for them falling. The vines are selected by the village elder and matched with each jumper's weight without any mechanical calculations. The vines need to be supple, elastic and full of sap in order to be safe. The ends of the vines are shredded to allow the fibers to be looped around the ankles of the jumpers. If the vines are too long, the diver can hit the ground hard, and if the vines are too short, then the diver can collide with the towel.
Before the men dive, they often bring closure to any unsettled business or disputes they may have in case they die. The night before the jump, all the divers sleep beneath the tower to help ward off evil spirits. I'm going to stop talking for now, and you can just enjoy watching the ritual with us. down to the trucks where we drove back down the highway and were taken to a sandy beach to have some lunch and wait for the planes to return to pick us up. If you're liking the video please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel it really does help us out. <laughs>